Okay, so we're now recording the meeting uh, for people who are not um, there and will want to listen to it later. Um, so in terms of administrivia, we have our virtually the data tracker, the Git, which I should be working more on, but obviously we want to use to replace the wiki. Uh, one reason, for example, is the recording of today it will be way too big to be uploaded on the wiki and our mailing list is still the same. Uh, we got a number of new people on the list and I, I think we've, there's been activity, uh, which was fun. Um, that's the thing. Uh, by the way, we have to show the note well. This is an interim meeting, but we are um, essentially uh, officially recorded. So we have to um, show the note well and that if anybody talks and has things like IP, uh, you know, IPR, uh, should be very aware of it. And uh, obviously there's all the things about uh, procedures and harassment and everything, uh, which is important. So, um, and uh, even and Jeffrey, you can uh, cut me any time, please. Um, so, what's our status? Um, the charter is now pretty stable. Uh, one of the big things that we did at in Montreal was to have this discussion about what we needed to change. Actually, there was not that many changes. Uh, so right now it's pretty stable and we do not intend any changes before um, IETF 106. Uh, Colin, who is on the call, um, told me that the chartering uh, will be on Monday, November 18. So actually there's a large chance that this will happen uh, before our meeting, unless we have a very early meeting on the Monday, uh, which is a short probability. Uh, but I think we are in good shape. Um, I think this is the group. Judging will happen at breakfast, so it should happen before the meeting. Yeah, it will. It will happen before the meeting. So that's what I'm saying. Is that so? Maybe we could have good news at the meeting. Uh, I, I think we're. I think we're in good shape. Um, it's this is you know this is me evaluating our own work. But anyway, uh, I think we had steady progress. I, I think the the topic is. Again, we're supposed to be a research group and the topic is appearing in a large number of conferences and um, academic uh, venues uh, about everywhere. Uh, ourselves, I think there's been, uh, everyone by the way, uh, we've had a, a number of uh, participants. We had a hackathon that was very good. So, so I, think, I think we're in good shape. So we're going to cross our fingers and yet again, uh, probably when we do have the meeting, uh, we may have uh, good news for everyone. Uh, that means that then that we'll have to be, well, we'll have to, you know, be more careful about defining the milestones uh, and, and then trying to achieve them. And, uh, you know, I've had that experience with, with my other uh, research group, but I think um, we'll, again, rely on everybody to uh, continue the great work. Um, so this is actually um, what we have as milestones right now. Uh, and this is actually what we we're going to do post IETF uh, 106 and going into 2020. Uh, there's, uh, I'm going to come back to this uh, later in the meeting, uh, but there's a lot of conferences that are going to happen uh, in early 2020. Uh, that will have an impact on the type of, of work that we could include, actually. And uh, I intend, uh, in the conferences that I will be involved with, to uh, essentially evangelize this group and, and make sure people are, are allowed, or are not allowed, are allowed in. Yes, no, are actually are aware of what's going on. I'm losing my English. Um, so we're going to have new topics uh, after uh, 106. Uh, we had already the video that was presented in Montreal remotely. I think there's going to be a follow-up to this. And like I said, Professor Frank Fietzek, um is looking at uh, virtualization and delay and how probably adding uh, computing inside the network uh, could help on that. Uh, we already have uh, Dirk and uh, Liu's um, point challenges. Uh, I expect those to be updated uh, for the next uh, meeting. 
the state of the art is still, again, is essentially what Dirk is doing. And uh, there's a lot of, again, related activity everywhere that Dirk's involved with. And there's even some work now that is planned for the um, the H2020 of the European Union. So everybody's a little bit into that. And I would say, and I know that I, EK is, I don't even know if Ike, anyway, is on the call. And there's an awful lot of work uh, being done right now in industrial networks uh, with uh, some kind of computing in the network. So this is actually very nice. Um, and um, I hope that we're going to have more documents on this. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, actually, I think Alex Bassi is not on the call because he had a conflict. But I think we're going to have another draft on the use of computing in a network in large uh, next generation uh, agricultural networks. Uh, so April 2020, so again, this is actually going to go into this. This is Vancouver. Uh, so the case studies will be there. Uh, again, we have the Kunse use cases, but we're going to have more. Um, and the XR, uh, I'm happy to report that Li Shang and Alex, I, I never know how to pronounce his name. Uh, the, the Alex from ICN uh, are going to help me on this one. And uh, there's also interest right now uh, in MIT Media Lab uh, about uh, this idea of distributing computing for augmented and distributed re reality. Uh, the ecosystem and dependency, we already have that. And I know this is something that Eve has a lot of interest in. Um, and I, I, okay, so uh, Mr. Um, <clears throat> Colin, you should know that, I, I hope you see that here, that it's not just us doing the work. I think what's great right now is there's an awful lot of people, we started things and they come in. So I think it shows us a lot of interest actually on the uh, ecosystem uh, redundancy. And also from the architecture, I want to uh, touch base with Noah Zimmerman at uh, Cambridge because she had a number of great ideas. She doesn't seem to have a lot of uh, cycles to write drafts, but I'm really thinking of how we could make sure that um, she could be more involved into this, uh, especially also that she's uh, involved in a DAG tool community and, and a lot of other prestigious places, including Cambridge. Um, and uh, so uh, that's actually, and then I, I think for for next year, so it's a year from now, um, we want to then focus maybe a little bit more. And I think on top of, of this, there's another, um, I would say another like dimension to this, which is the work that we were trying to do in the, in the hackathon that, that I'm going to come back to and is also trying to define, you know, what's going on in this programmable data plane. Of course, it's a P4 uh, for the moment. And I think this is something that I would like to have feedback either today or on the list from the people who are participating. So right now the hackathon is about P4 because this is how the way we started it. Uh, but P4 is not the only way to do uh, computing in the network. So if people have other ideas, uh, I wouldn't mind to still calling it a, or why did I say I? Uh, I think there shouldn't be any problem in, for the moment, still calling it P4, but eventually at one point, just calling it computing in the network and see what else we can do. And I know that Eve, I'm going to talk to you, for you on this, but I, and then you can talk when we talk about the hackathon, but Eve has, you know, this, this idea that yes, we should have a, a common project uh, for the group to do in this hackathon. And I think that's by next year, we should be like really, um, well into defining uh, what's happening, especially, like I said, there's a number of research projects uh, going around that could be like the basis for some of this implementation. Uh, again, question, comments, you know, I have the impression I'm, in a, I'm alone in my, in my living room right now, so I have the impression I'm talking to myself. Um, okay, so uh, the meeting uh, next month, uh, so, we requested it, and as, like I said, it may be our first official meeting, um, which could be cool. Um, and uh, so the important date for everyone on the call is that um, by uh, the 4th of November, all the drafts should be there. Um, and um, 
even like I would say for people who make uh, reviews of their drafts, usually this is this can be either a major job or a smaller job. But I would say for people who intend to submit for the first time, uh, make sure that you plan your work uh, accordingly. Um, and um, like I said, I don't know if there's going to be time for uh, a lot of new drafts, but since there are going to be a lot of presentations in uh, November that 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 could get more uh, even more drafts for, for the next meeting in Vancouver and then uh, by the uh, 6th of November um, the uh, it would be nice for people to send their agenda items uh, I will have a very personal request here I am actually teaching in uh, Singapore the week before uh, the meeting and so I will be really busy first with jet lag and second with class and so I think um, we were three uh, um, by then we'll know exactly what what day the meeting is on but if we need to, to have like all the, the agenda and everything I think it would be great for the three of us to be like very much aligned uh, what's going to happen uh, with the meeting before I leave on the 11th so that means that the sixth would be really cool to have most of the agenda items uh, so that you know people anyway and also for at least for me I think this time it's it's Jeff was the, uh, the lucky guy because it's it's less far but I think for both uh, me and uh, Eve uh, Singapore is not exactly next door so um, again agenda items welcome and again please review your um, your um, drafts and for those of you who have the intention of submitting a first draft beware that the submission tool is not exactly user-friendly so um, beware that get a good HTML editor the hackathon uh, okay so this is um, um, going on um, actually it seems that we were very successful last time uh, I hadn't really uh, realized that because I had never done one um, so we're going to have it again this time however uh, compared to Montreal where we had uh, a company that essentially supported us um, it's not going to be as good in um, in Singapore so the plan is or and please again tell me I'm wrong uh, so, so getting new participants we were very lucky in Montreal that when we actually put up our sign saying you know we're going to do P4 programming in the network we actually ended up having people who were there to participate in other hackathons who were very interested by this and joined us so getting new participants is a good thing and getting new participants before the meeting is even a better thing so for example in my class in um, at Nanyang University I've actually asked some of the students to come on the Saturday so my class is on the Friday all day we're not going to do P4 but we're going to mention uh, it's innovation and networking so uh, we're going to uh, mention uh, computing and network and I told them ahead of time that um, if they wanted to participate since it's free so I hope some of them are going to come this will mean that they're going to be new so I will have all the tools that we installed in Montreal installed and, and help people installing them. I am not, again, a P4 programmer, but I know how to use the tool. However, and I see Emil on the list, on the, on the list of people over here, for the people who were there in Montreal, uh, the second day in Montreal, we had started uh, working on data filtering and the project was very small. It was just to see if we could identify from a header a certain packet and based on this identification do something so either we send the packet to a different place either we change the header of that packet you know the, the basic stuff you can do in p4 uh, and that also relates to a fairly known architecture and, and computing network which is called netcast where actually you do that and then you send packets uh, that you change the, the destination to another processor and most of the time it's a GPU so this is I would say if we were going to build a larger set of tools for people who do computing and network this one is fairly basic and it has a lot of value 
in both industrial networks and video distribution. In industrial networks, this application is to identify packets that are, I would say, useful. It also, I would say, it's it's similar to stuff that's been done in autonomous networks, but uh, let's, autonomous vehicles, but let's talk about industrial networks since we have a draft on that. Um, it's also, it's very, it's very useful, again, industrial networks to identify packets that have interest uh, and interest and Eve, I'm, I'm working on interest here really almost in an ICN way. So if I'm an industrial network, I'm interested to know uh, which packets represent an alarm, uh, which packets represent just uh, the status of a machine or the status of a process. Then I want to be able to filter these uh, fairly, um, fairly early. Uh, in the uh, the networking chain, I would call it, especially if it's an alarm. So when things go bad, I want to see that really now. So the first device that these packets hit or that the information hits, uh, I want to be able to really filter out what is, uh, I would say, just, you know, I'm doing fine and things are, are moving clearly in the way they're supposed to be to, oh my God, some machine is failing. So this is actually an application for, for that data filtering. The other one is in video distribution, obviously, uh, where you know it, it actually can see what type of video it is, uh, what destination it is, uh, the type of content that this video carries. And uh, this has a lot of interest, like the, the XR uh, draft that I did, but also uh, I, I don't know if there's anybody from, from NoviFlow or the University of Australia they're working with. But this also has uh, a lot of value in video distribution. So, uh, Eve, uh, while you were in uh, your um, sabbatical, lovely sabbatical, <laughs> lovely sabbatical, uh, I'm sure lovely. Um, I hope you had the lovely weather we had here. Uh, and uh, I, I started essentially thinking about that, and that's why I kept this data filtering for the hackathon because I think this is the basis for these one or two uh, bigger projects that. Uh, you were uh, hinting at. And again, for the moment, it is going to be P4. But something that we can all talk about at the, uh, at the hackathon and that we can talk at the meeting when we do the hackathon follow-up is that once we are going to have this, this maybe, let's assume, a bunch of P4 uh, basic uh, libraries at one point, uh, what else do we want to do? And this is something for the future, and I'm not expecting to have uh, responses on Sunday, November uh, 17. But I, it's just something that we can keep in the background. Again, we're we're not a commercial, you know, commercial software people. We're not even, you know, we're not doing a standard way of doing anything, but. For people doing research, especially in a field that's pretty new, it's always fun that you can come, you can go somewhere and download a few libraries that will help you. And I think right now, if we look at applications that do have this this vision of the edge core uh, continuum, industrial networks and video distribution are kind of it. Is and actually, I I will also. I will also say that um, the ecosystem draft, which is at the moment entitled something along the lines of edge, dis edge data discovery, um, but which follows on the heel of presentations both in the very first BOF Quain meeting and uh, the ICNRG, um, the focus there was on, in fact, a use case we called ubiquitous and we continue to call ubiquitous witness, which is video driven as well. So it falls in quite nicely with this notion that we're trying to build up a library of um, capabilities that can handle uh, video distribution. But there's the additional um, facet to it, which is irrespective of whether uh, we are searching through video data or some other continuous data stream, um, we are hoping that uh, what's, what's really happening is this model of, or at least mental model of 
that what's normal, what does normalcy mean in some context versus um, anomalous behavior? And it's the anomalous behavior that triggers some kind of other activity, whether that's filtering, you know, P4 filtering on information in the data stream or packet headers and so forth. So it's this kind of event driven um, rerouting of packets or, or um, classification of packets into different categories based on whether whatever's going on is normal versus abnormal. And I yeah. think that yeah. that kind of pattern is exactly what we see all the time in industrial and in IoT um, and so forth. And so that that's the other part of the the processing is you know what triggers the data filtering. Yeah, um, and, and, again, and so a library for that would be great. Yeah, and and you know I I'm I'm doing this like with a, some kind of I'm not completely uh, uh, not not really not related to my own interest here, but I would say that. Uh, some of the work I've been doing in the past few months on establishing a big AI-based IoT um, system for an industrial net, actually that has an industrial network. This is exactly what we're doing. We're using the packet filtering uh, in, and I would say some kind of ICM-based interest uh, definitions to to classify packets and to make sure that. Uh, we accumulate the right packets in the right place so that things that need to be actioned on today or now, not even today, like now or somewhere and things that need to be actioned later because they're part of it tra for training data for an AI system are, are done elsewhere. So I, I think that's exactly it. And the video distribution is the same thing. Uh, some video, you know, can be cached locally because this is something that everybody wants. And some video can be just let go and cached somewhere else because this is, uh, you know, I'm the only person probably in my whole neighborhood who watches French movies. So, um, you know, you can think about, and again, this is it, it, that has also value, and I didn't put it there, but I think this has value also for all the AI uh, algorithms that need valid training data. And to define what is valid training data, we also need some form of data filtering. So that's why I think that continuing the work in data filtering is a good idea. And now that you've talked, Eve, I think it would be, when I write better slides, uh, I think it would be interesting to see that, it, to have maybe a follow-up to the hackathon. So, you know, we have a little group that we've put together after Montreal that I haven't really followed up that much on, but had the people from NoviFlow, had uh, the people that participated, and we had said, you know, maybe we just want to use it as a, as a seed for a, a larger uh, team. <coughs> but I think maybe post-Singapore, uh, we could also have, like, you know, an ongoing development effort, uh, you know, probably, obviously, all uh, voluntary right now because there's no budget, but that you know, we continue doing this uh, so that the um, the libraries uh, continue on their own. So this is something uh, that we can talk about and another thing to talk about in Singapore when there's going to be a larger um, group of people. But it's also something that we could, if people agree, it's just something we could start talking to on the list uh, because I know that at least one person who's local here and does a lot of P4 uh, development is, is not on the call right now, and I guess the NoviFlow people could also be interested, and there's another company in Montreal that does something similar called Kaloom, and I'm just knowing the companies in Montreal right now because it's what I did for the hackathon there, but I'm sure there's other people elsewhere. And there's you guys, it's held with the, the, the Barefoot uh, acquisition, that, you know, so I think that could be a, a, a fairly good uh, participant of people who could be interested in, in some kind of open source site set of libraries. Um, so this said, I repeat, there's currently no plans for development support. Uh, I know, Jeffrey, you said that maybe you would try to find people. Um, so helpers are welcome. Uh, people who know about uh, P4, please get, move forward, you know, step forward. And again, even if you're not a P4 person, but you're interested in data filtering and you would like to do it in another language, right? You know, just come forward also, because we could also um, just use this. Um, I, I think that the hackathon right now, as far as I'm concerned, is almost a 
a more of a hands-down uh, community-based uh, pre-IETF meeting. So it's cool because everybody's there. There's a lot of people from the other teams that you never, never get to see during the week. So uh, just come and you know have fun, and they feed you, which is not bad. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, there's three meals on the Saturday and two on the on the Sunday. <coughs> and and I don't know, it, it was it was good food. And I have to attract grad students. You feed them. That's why I told my students in in Singapore. You know, you can if you come to the hackathon, not only you can learn about a new computer language, but also you'll get fed. So usually it's good for for grad students. Uh, so this is all the drafts we have, um, and it's a growing list. And like I said, uh, the only new thing I have is the fact that the um, um, XR will be uh, held by Alicia and Alex. Um, I have already had some contacts with uh, the team of the Kunse Coin Industrial Use Case. Uh, and I'm supposed to help them a little bit with that because, again, of the, the work that I've been doing in Montreal, uh, I expect uh, Dirk to and and um, Jorg to update their drafts. I haven't heard from uh, Dr. Liu, but I expect that she's going to do uh, some work. I did talk to uh, Dirk Trossen, which is the next one, Sarah Chandra. Uh, he could not be here uh, this morning because he had a conflict on the west. It's actually on the west coast of the U.S., but he had a um, a conflict. But he uh, they're still working on it, and they intend to update it. Uh, Jeffrey, maybe you can talk about yours. I talked about mine, and uh, uh, Eve talked about yours. So Jeffrey, you expect to have a an update on your draft? Yes, maybe uh, some slight uh, modification about uh, some new use cases, what we are working Okay, great. So that's for, um, okay, so if you want to talk about it later, that's great too. Uh, you know, there's, I have an open discussion time and we're going to have a lot of time because um, uh, I don't think there's a lot of press. So if you want to talk about it uh, later, yeah, in the open discussion, that's great. Um, and uh, like, I likewise, I would say that um, for us, we had done a uh, extensive update. I had done an extensive update uh, at the last by the last ITF, and had although I had a, a kind of internal exchange with all the authors on our edge data discovery draft, um, that internal um, discussion that was triggered by some, an extensive review on the mailing list that next iteration didn't make it into the mailing list. So I think for starters, we'll do that, and then we'll um, make changes beyond that for a, a version four for okay, this so meeting. Uh, let's have you and uh, and Jeffrey to talk when we have the open uh, discussion. Uh, again, uh, okay. I was hoping that maybe uh, Dirk Trossen would be able to dial in, so we'll see what happens. And of course, uh, with the new topics, uh, we're probably going to have this, this virtualization uh, work that may end up being in a draft. Uh, I will talk to um, the, the team in Chicago about the video um, work that was done and see how we can help them uh, submit a draft. And the same with, like I said, Zoa, Noah Zimmerman. Uh, since we have Colin on the line here, uh, I think this is a challenge, uh, writing drafts for uh, people in university context, especially in what I would call very competitive universities where you don't have a lot of cycles to write that. So I think um, I have the intention, although I'm going to also be very busy with other university stuff, but that maybe um, we could see the research group as also helping uh, people in academia um, get their work with us, uh, the IRTF in general, and, and in our case, our own group, so that we can help them uh, write the drafts or actually find people to support them in writing the drafts so that we don't let go of very, very interesting research just because people are so busy because, you know, when you're 
an adjunct professor or a non-tenured professor or an associate professor, you're so busy with all kinds of things that it's very hard to take the time to write drafts. So I think we should find ways to support them. And, and I think my first use cases on this are going to be, yes, Chicago and Cambridge. So let's see what happens. And again, yeah, I, I, I think that makes sense. Um, also, don't, don't um, necessarily assume that drafts are required. Um, you know, the, the IETF is very focused on drafts, but the IRTF doesn't have to be. But I would say some kind of document that we can upload. Uh, and, and again, it could be just maybe, that's another thing I, talked, I, thought, I thought about. You know, it could just be, okay, send us your latest publication, and I'm going to add it to the list of documentation just to say, okay, so this is people who are working with us. This is people who are on our, on our mailing list. This is the type of work they do. And if we want to have a draft to have an informational RFC on, you know, the use of in, um, of in network computing uh, for, um, like if I think about the video one to improve uh, resolution uh, or actually the transmission of different levels of resolution in an image, well, let's help them do that so that the, the, the work, again, uh, I have the impression, and I, I think about what, what's happening, okay, I, I don't want to badmouth my other research group, but I would say we've actually, we've actually struggled with that, um, that the, there was a lot of very, very good work done, and people didn't have time to, to really participate, and I, I think we should see ourselves also as, as enablers of, of these people. Okay. So. I, I think there's a, a, a few different ways these research groups can go, though. And I mean, what one is you're know, writing down architectures and requirements and, and producing drafts, uh, you know, t targeting particular use cases or particular experimental protocols or whatever it happens to be. Uh, and I think it's a very valuable way, way for, for an IRTF group to go. Um, another is just as an enabling forum for people to get together and talk about things. Um, and you know, maybe people give presentations um, you know, uh, of papers they present, they presented elsewhere. Maybe people give presentations of early work to get some feedback. Yeah. Um, maybe the group just facilitates uh, a bunch of people doing related work to get together and have a discussion. Um, yeah, and with, um, so some ITF people or some industry people they wouldn't normally talk to. And I think that's that's entirely reasonable as well. So so yeah. Um, Drafts and RFCs are certainly one possible outcome, but uh, if, if the, the research group is is facilitating other work and, and not necessarily producing RFCs, that's that's also perfectly reasonable. And again, that's why I, I think um, I, I so I during the summer um, I had to go to Montreal a number of times for meetings, but allowed me a lot of times in airports, and um, so I, I kind of discovered all the stuff that's in the data tracker and everything. And so, yes, you know, we can just upload different types of documents. And at first I thought that you could only upload draft type documents and that every other references would have to be in either the Git or the, the Wiki. And I discovered, no, that, you, you know, you just have to say, this is a document that I want there. And as long as it's some kind of PDF, it's fine. So that, that's exactly, I completely agree with you. And I think uh, if you look at the meeting that we've had up to now in this proposed group, uh, we've had a mix of people presenting drafts and also people uh, coming to talk about, you know, what's going on in in their uh, research that that relates to us, and, and I think it's great. And uh, I know also people, a lot of people on this call probably don't or are not on the list uh, that that Colin comes comes to a lot. And uh, I think yesterday there was also. Um, comments about, you know, having uh, in their interims or even full meetings when there is a major uh, conference that relates to, to the research group. Uh, myself, and I think probably for other people, it's kind of great to do it with the IETF because then a lot of people are there. So you get access to everybody the same week and they're all free. Uh, this said, I think um, there's other conferences that are kind of interesting. And again, in a group, in a field like ours that is very much in uh, in evolution, and I would say an explosion right now. Uh, there could be a lot of opportunities to hold at least interims uh, at the same time as a uh, a conference. And I would say that already uh, next year in September, the interim meeting will be co-located with the ICN conference in Montreal because 
there's going to be a lot of people there who are part of our group. So I think we're, we're really looking at things like that. Uh, so this is a new topic, and Frank will present it in, uh, and I'm almost finished talking, so this is the end of it. Uh, before that, I just want to go to the la my actually my last slide, and then I won't be able to, I will just stop talking. So again, we're meeting in Singapore, and this actually relates, because this is really much relates to what we just said. Uh, I think in Singapore, what would we like to have is also to provide a list of related conferences and projects. And why? Because there's a lot of it. And second, because it would allow us not only to, I would say, promote these conferences in our group, but also promote our group at these conferences. Um, and uh, so I gave an example. Uh, and again, this is my own uh, advertisement here. Uh, this is this workshop on flexible network data plane processing. This is going to be uh, next spring uh, in France. And actually, it is very much about things related to COIN. There's a lot of people in the technical program committee uh, that are uh, also a member of this list. And I'm actually on, on it. I think I'm the workshop chair, if I remember. Uh, and there's going to be others. Like I said, already in uh, ICN 2020, we intend to have a COIN interim. Um, and there's going to be a lot of other conferences. And I think, again, as a research group, uh, I think we have to be aware of what other people are doing. And I think we would like other people who are doing it to be also aware of, of us. So uh, I think this follows on this thing that it's not only drafts and stuff that help us, but it's, uh, it's everything. But it doesn't mean that people who have drafts, please update them. So let's go back and open discussion. So I'm going to stop talking. And Jeffrey, you wanted to talk about your new, uh, your new activities. And Eve, you wanted to talk about your new activities. And I see there's a bunch of people on the call, Emil from uh, France Telecom and Hanu. Uh, if anyone, so this is open, no slides, you know, to discussion. Oh, Noah, you're here. Thank you. Uh, and um, so it's a, oh, Noah wants to talk. Great. Take it. How do you yeah. Do you hear me? Yes. Good morning. Okay. Good. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to comment on the, the previous couple of slides. It would really help us, the researchers that don't usually engage with IRTF, to know uh, these uh, pathways to engage because uh, the discussion on the mailing list and the, like the first. Uh, part of uh, this meeting has suggested that uh, the main way to engage is through a uh, draft. So as, uh, as you know, mo most researchers uh, will, will not submit such draft and you will not see a lot of the work going to uh, workshops. There are some top tier researchers that will be submitting only to SIGCOM and SDI and uh, Infocom. So they won't be so submitting uh, to the a targeted workshop. So it, it might be good to find a way to engage better because there is, especially in this area, a, a lot of, uh, it's really important to have uh, this discussion between academia and the uh, IRTF because, uh, because uh, the academia needs this feedback as well. And I'm talking about use cases, I'm talking about data, you know, it, it making uh, some of the research real. Uh, so, so I think that it would really help to come up with a way uh, to engage better. It might just uh, be, you know, when we summarize this meeting, also to send a specific separate email that is just uh, uh, for this purpose, you know, with the title, I asked uh, a coin RG engagement with the academia and uh, to note there, you know, there are several ways that they were mentioned earlier. As a mean to engage. That is a really good idea, and uh, we're, yes, and we're, yes, and I was telling you, I started, thank you enough, a few weeks ago to think about the ways to do that. So my first idea was that again to upload significant documents uh, in our list of documents, so that when somebody publishes at SIGCOM or at Infocom or 
everywhere else, or even like, you know, we, I, I sent the DAG uh minutes, for example, of this year. But so when we have a, a significant document to put it in our documents, but yes, let's start that discussion because I think especially for us, you know, we have Nick Fernster does a lot of work on that, will never send us anything because he's busy doing something else. Uh, so let's start it and let's not, well, anybody who has ideas today, this is the time. But also, I completely agree with you, Noah. Let's start a thread on the on the mailing list. Um, other people, Jeffrey, Eve, comments, presentation. I think but, uh, that, um... it's Danielle from. Oh, go ahead, Daniel. Okay, it's Daniel from Bell. So, from past experience in some of the research groups in ITF, PanRG was one, SDNRG was one, is some of the presentations that were done were not always drafts. They were actually academic research that people came in and presented as academic research rather than try to have the formalized paper. I think that was one that helps out because uh, translating research papers or SIGCOM papers into I3F drafts sometimes is cumbersome for what is more about explaining the research. And that was actually helpful in those times. Uh, I do see value in some drafts like the ones that, which are now because uh, if we think about what ITF will need to be able to uh, absorb is those kind of shifts from the standard protocols they would normally do. Uh, that's a big, it's a big transition phase for ITF as it goes, as we go along. Starting to see more pseudo code and drafts than actual pay wording. Uh, that's also something we're, we're going to start to see more. Uh, me, as I travel a lot of the world, I realize that it's impossible to follow everything that's going on in that kind of field. So having some, I don't know if it's the wiki page of CoinRG or some others to make sure that we have linkage to the other uh, conferences and research papers available. Because uh, as we go along, I think not even Syncom will have everything. So it, it really becomes, uh, I think it's a community effort to make sure that people can post their research or show it either through the mailing list or access to the wiki to be able to make them visible. Uh, I think that would be uh, tremendously useful. Thank you so much. Eve? Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is Jeffrey. So maybe one, one thing we can do right now is maybe we move our, our reference papers to our GitHub. Right? So we have in our wiki at the very beginning of uh, this coin RG, coin proposed RG, we, ha we have uh, maintained a long list of reference papers. But, but so maybe uh, later we can maintain it at the, our uh, GitHub. So that's, uh, then we can continue to add a new uh, reference to reference papers there. Yeah, I, I think there's the references in GitHub, and I think for me there's also like the major papers, and I would really like to put them in the research group or the proposed research group data tracker, the same place we put the drafts. Yeah, and uh, another thing, uh, as, as uh, Colin said, so, so so besides about the drafts, we we are we can play as a forum, right? In fact. So at the, at the, our previous uh, meetings, so we have already uh, the similar way, right? So we invite uh, those uh, talks, maybe not necessarily related to the existing jobs. In fact, we have put those talks in higher priority than the existing existing uh, jobs. For example, if and uh, me, but usually we don't, uh, we didn't have uh, opportunity to introduce ours. So we, we can further to do this. I think we can, uh, especially, especially at the beginning phase, at the earlier, earlier stage. Then later, maybe we can find uh, some new architecture. We can, we can steal from these talks, then let's see what will happen, right? Yes, I would agree, Jeffrey. Um, so maintaining and moving the reference list from our wiki to the GitHub and making sure people know that that's a living document or a living list of kind of uh, important reading materials. 
um, and have presentations of uh, and references to major papers and uh, when needed to continue to prioritize uh, the presentation of things that are not strictly drafts because the drafts are easy to get to and can be you know read and discussed on the mailing list um, and continue to invite um, important work that might have been debuted somewhere else. That, that was kind of what I am summarizing here of what you said, Jeffrey. Did I miss anything? Yeah, it, yes, I you better what I trying to express. Yes, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, sort of um, that there's a, a more of a discussion phase perhaps at the start, and you know, uh, finding ideas and, and understanding the problem space, and uh, get, getting as many different views and viewpoints in as we can, and, and not perhaps worrying too much about drafts and, and uh, output documents initially, uh, and then uh, uh, the group may, may sort of naturally um, sort of co coalesce on a, a group of documents which we will end up then publishing. So. I mean, as, as I said earlier, I think uh, producing RFCs and documents is, is valuable, but don't, don't uh, worry about getting to it too early. Make, make sure actually you're getting, getting all the inputs uh, from, a, from a very broad community first. So I do think that in order to get all of the right inputs, it, it does take different perspectives. So for example, having folks from industry, from academia, um, from various um, government projects in different geos around the world, whether that's Industry 4.0, H2020, you know, whatever we, whatever it is, um, what, you know, and there are probably corollaries in other countries and, and regions. Um, all of that um, kind of percolating or synthesizing together, and and we need to actively probably reach out to some of these communities. So I think using the list as a place to say, you know, here's this interesting thing going on. You know, what was the most interesting couple of papers that appeared at, you know, various venues or who's driving different um, pro programs, broader programs um, and getting them in. And and I think it will, it will take work to actively um, help the broader community see the Coinergy as um, a meeting place. But that's maybe what our, our aspiration should be for the long, long term. Yeah, I would agree with that. That sounds like a good way to go. Um, I'm, I'm going to um, be the bad person and uh, Aiki, I know that you had uh, questions made to the group about, and actually goes back a little bit to what we just talked about, is this whole concept of the industrial networks or anything. Do you want to add to this discussion? Um, actually, I think that we have like a different understanding of what we mean with industrial networks. And um, yeah, that's probably also something that we will address in the update of the draft. Uh, okay, so what you you have the you have the floor now. What do you think uh, it needs to be done um, that would meet what you want to to achieve? Um, what exactly do you mean? So where? Should something well, need to be said, done? You said that your understanding was different from uh, what other people are thinking. So, what is your understanding? Because again, okay. we have you know we we have a, a kind of a nice group of people here. So you know maybe we can start um, helping you for the next version of your document, or you know get ideas out before the the Singapore. So. I know you had some some new ideas or concerns or something. So maybe you can talk about it. Um, yeah, so actually we are working on two different uh, topics right now um, regarding the uh, industrial networks. Um, what we actually mean with that is the like really big machines 
production plants, building cars, for example. Um, whereas we think that most of you guys probably mean like large data centers, for example. Absolutely um, not. Uh, that's okay. exactly okay. So um, let me rephrase. There's a lot of computing in the network that started as data centers. But I would say, at least for myself and I think for a lot of people on this call, we are not talking data centers. We're talking industrial networks where the device are actually in the plant, not in a data center. And when we talk about the, the data filtering, for example, this is not a data center functionality. Yeah. Uh, I will, if, I talk, if I think of, well, I'm not thinking of like maybe huge machines, but I'm talking of machines. And I would say for me that data filtering happens very, very close to the, where the machine is. Because again, with the, um, the, the stuff that Eve was talking about, if we're going to do data filtering on diagnostics, for example, uh, we don't do that in the data center. We want to do it close. So continue because I think we all agree. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe then we have a common understanding, but we just don't know it yet, or at least we don't know it yet. Um, uh, anyways, um, so yeah, that's one. So we want to, um, yeah, so I guess one major problem of our draft until now is that we don't really. Um, as you probably mentioned in, in Montreal, is that we uh, don't really have the implementations or um, that we don't really talk about what is currently done um, or like what is really done in industry because there uh, we often find these uh, closed source um, solutions which we do not have access to and all our partners here, um, they also don't know what's really done um, in, or what's really working somewhere in industry. So that is probably the, the biggest challenge for us. Like, um, yeah, not so that we don't really, uh, so that we can't really present what has actually already been done somewhere if it's uh, like closed source. Um, yeah, solution. And I think that is also what, um, yeah, what I already um, wrote you in the email. Okay, and and so that's actually, uh, with, I think this goes into this uh, discussion that um, Noah raised, and um, I think again, I think this shows how important it is uh, the thread. Of what can we do to help uh, academics? And um, so, I think in your case, what you need is the support of a real industry. Uh, and um, the to, to academia, but I think also um, this is something that is beyond us. Uh, I think this is also something that could be discussed. Could be a topic for the IRSG uh, dinner in um, in Singapore uh, because I think it's something that all the groups have to face. But since we started it, let's 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 deal with it uh, in our group and see if we can actually distill something. That will be useful for the others. Um, but again, uh, well, I'd like to um, I'd like to underscore that um, you know you, since you have gone to the trouble of writing the draft, um, I think it would be great to capture in the draft itself, if you haven't already, um, the ch this kind of challenge and that it's an appeal um, to those in the working group. Um, even if you could have access to one person, let alone maybe a, uh, two or three different um, people who represent various companies that have direct hands-on experience that in some manner of anonymity can at least share at a high level um, some of the information you need. So I would say if we could articulate it um, and make, make a more full, formal request out of it um, as part of the problem statement to this area for CoinRG, that would be, that might be a first step. And that we help with the solicitation of um, others who can help solve the problem. Yeah, I don't know if I... we'll get any answers, but, but, uh, get, but capture it as, you know, 
and document it as well, needed I, to move this draft forward. Yeah, I think I think to start, uh, okay, like like Noah said, let's start a trend on our research group or proposed research group still, because we are facing a situation that could be different from other groups. At the same time that we are looking at that whole research, uh, and I would say industrial networks are just one part of it, but I would say let's focus on that one for, for one second, that we are looking at how uh, the research about the more and more, you know, they call it uh, industry 4.0, agriculture 4.0, uh, vehicle 4.0, whatever is called 4.0 right now. So there's a lot of research, but at the same time, there's a lot of pressure from companies uh, who want to get into um, um, who um, who want to implement solutions. So I think we have this tussle in our group in particular between industry uh, wanting to have solutions and us researchers uh, still researching. Uh, and I think to to communicate or to have these two groups communicate. And to essentially, yes, start this trend of how we maybe how we can help academia, but at the same time, it will help other people, the industry, and do it for our group. So with our problem, it may be different in other groups. Uh, I can see that more, uh, like for example, network coding uh, has a completely different set of problems. So I, I think right now we're not there. But let's do it for our group, and if something out of our group is useful for the others. Because a lot of people on, on this call are not just members of this research group, but also do IETF and do other research groups. So if something out of our group comes out that is um, useful, then it will be. But it, I think it will be useful for us, as you said, Eve, to us focus on what we want to achieve and have a better view of what the research field is and how all of this is going to evolve. So I think it's, it's a really good way of starting it. Nobody has an, an opinion? Well, we have somebody from industry here who hasn't talked. Hanu, uh, what are your, you know, from your point of view, what what, what do you see? Because you, you're a researcher in industry, so you have both hats. So what do you feel, how do you feel about this? Well, can you hear me? I think you can. Yes, we can. Okay, yes. So the, the closest, closest standardization part is related to it's computing that I'm following is, is Etsy and 3GPP, where, where there, there is a lot of momentum at the moment on defining these details. And, and they're, they're going already in, in quite, quite deep in, in the system and protocol stacks, defining how do you use DNS in discovering data and servers and, and, and things like that. So, I'm, I'm just. But who is they? Uh, what, uh, what groups are you talking about? I, I'm talking about 3GPP, SA2, SA6, oh, for instance. Got it. Okay. And, and, and then Etsy, Etsy Mech, of course, and Etsy NFE. Those are the primary working groups. What was the group inside of 3GPP? In 3GPP, SA6. Oh. And, uh, oh, SA6, the study group, and SA2. Okay, got it. Thank yes. you. Yes. Uh, SA6 is uh, on the application level, whereas this SA2 is on, on the infrastructure level. Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah. um, they, uh, have, they, they have their own views on the architectures, and of course, starting from what is the mobile network and trying to shoehorn the it's the architecture into that. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I think I think we have a more, um, I would say, organic way of looking at it. But yeah, it's interesting. Again, I think we need to know what other people are doing. But again, we're not trying to do a standardization. So right. It it doesn't really matter. I know there's work in ITU, for example, that could be related. But again. Um, they're looking at standardization and we're not. Right. 
but from from the your industrial point of view um is there plans to implement any of this or is just for the moment participating in uh architecture groups and something certainly we, we are planning to implement and, and we are offering this visits computing so operators operators as well as industries are interesting in in investigating this okay these products and and and, and gain the benefits of of having this data processing close to where things happen anybody else has um um, I see names that uh, I don't know if I've ever seen on this on this list again, but that's fine. Um, well, who's hiding behind Timu? <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I was thinking. Who is Timu? <laughs> is, is that Technical University of Munich? Yeah, it, it has to be mentioned Technical University, but who's Timu? Uh, is that yes, you, Jor? I, yeah, I'm from Jork's group. Okay. So I'm just uh, listening in. Uh, try to see see what is going on. Okay, well, say hello to Jorg. Uh, well. um, mm -hmm. there's no, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, again, uh, both Jeffrey and Eve, you had updates on your on your drafts. You want to talk about it now? We have a ton of time, so. Okay, I try to keep this short. So, uh, so in some of you I mean, you know, I have, um, I'm interested both uh, in edge computing and in data center, but current uh, job is uh, mainly focused on the data center use case. And recently we have uh, investigated uh, some other use cases so besides, besides those already in current job, for example, in that we're ordering or some others, so related to distributed database. So how in that computing can help to improve the performance of uh, distributed database inside the data center? That's uh, what I'm recently investigating. Uh, this one thing, uh, and uh, secondly is that uh, we have some uh, implementation uh, on proof of concept for in that computing for AI training. So beyond, uh, in that implementation, we uh, envisioned some uh, potential improve, improvement ab about the transport protocols. So this is probably related to uh, Ike's uh, email in our list. So uh, uh, Ike, you mentioned about the some transport protocols in, in network computing in industrial networks. So probably we can work together, explore in that topic. So because so last week I was in the national holiday, so I I'm, I haven't opportunity to respond to the mailing list. But uh, we we can discuss later. Yeah, it, it would be great so, if, you could, if you could put it on the mailing list too. So but there's yeah, 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 yes, it. yeah. So uh, another another thing. So in long term, I'm thinking some of uh, our experience in the data center, for example, for the distributed uh, database, probably can be applicable as well to the computing use case. Some people are arguing about geographic distributed database among these implemented in the uh, edge computing. That's a potential interesting topic in future, in near, near future for me. So maybe I will also explore that topic later. If, if anyone have, have, have the same interest, maybe you can contact me and uh, discuss. And for the details, maybe I need some time to capture in the in, in, in my job. Okay, so that's all. Um, 
Um, again, like we we just discussed, it doesn't have to be a draft if you just want to start a yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or just make a presentation. It's fine. Uh, Eve, you had also a tape. Yeah, um, we had gotten some extensive comments from Dave Aran on the mailing list, and I believe that I answered in kind. We had some in, ex extensive response to him on each of the points that he made about our draft. Now, our draft is focused essentially on edge data discovery, and the reason why that's related to CoinRG is it goes along these lines. The thinking is that, you know, Internet of Things and devices, particularly sensors and monitoring elements uh, at the very edges of the network are creating um, a lot of data. And um, it may, over its lifetime, reside at the very edges of the network. Um, but it's more likely that that data, um, you know, at least initially the model was that that data was going to be sent back to the, to the cloud. But as more and more devices are either continuously generating data or are high volume data, such as cameras, which are sort of the, if you look at the um, kinds of devices that are getting added to the Internet of Things, you know, cameras just, um, are a huge percentage of the of those things. They're generating vast amounts of data. There's just no way that any uh, that that data is going to be sent back to the cloud. Certainly not in its in original format. So if nothing else, some of the compute that's happening at the edges of the network is going to be transformational, transcoding, and so forth, compression, subsampling, all of those sort of. How do I you know fit this data across the pipe? But then more sophisticated um, computations, because after all, pointing a camera at something that is mostly um, uninteresting, you know, isn't useful to send that data back somewhere. It's only in the event of something, as we said earlier, anomalous or interesting or unique um, or rare or all of the all of those kinds of um, adjectives <laughs> that you could assign to the to the data with within the data within the video stream. Um, and so what we're seeing is this phenomenon that, yes, there's a lot of data being created around the network in any place imaginable, in any place that you could put a sensor or a monitor or even a computer um, or camera. Uh, but additionally, each time we go through one of these computations or transformations, we are also generating new data. So data begets new data. And it leads to the sprinkling of data kind of everywhere throughout our physical environment. And we may actually want to keep track of it if it becomes too expensive to send it back um, to somewhere more archival. And that, um, so, so that, that's kind of the problem of, or, or the use case that we're imagining or the scenarios that arise in our current networks with these vast numbers of devices connecting and all of those devices generating data. So I would say that the most interesting comment that we received back <clears throat> was one from, uh, was one that focused on, you know, the question, why just focus on data discovery um, as, as a side effect of um, computation on, on data? Why not the whole life cycle of data stewardship or data management? And so that's the big to do that is facing us is should we somehow reorient this draft to comprehend the data life cycle and talk about the requisite problems that are related to compute in the network for each of these stages because they are related. It's hard to separate them. So. Um, and as you can, you can imagine, that's a big problem to tackle. So we, uh, instead of tackling that problem, we answered pretty much all of the other questions, um, of which there were many. Um, and, and that was what resulted in draft number three. We didn't post those to the list. I posted them to the, the co-authors, but we'll, we'll send all of that to the list for people to consume and then raise this bigger question about 
well, one, is this an interesting enough problem for the CoinRG group? Is this the right group to have the discussion in about the whole data life cycle um, of all these, um, you know, d devices attached at the edges of the network that do have a compute aspect to them, but not in every single part of the life cycle of the data. So, so that's where we are with our draft. I think this, um, it, it still um, needs some, we need to do diligence to really capture the proper references for, um, for completeness. And we're still trying to frame, you know, what's the problem we're tackling and is it going to have this broader scope? And I don't know how many people actually have looked at it or have thought about this problem, but I would absolutely welcome your feedback as we continue to evolve it. It's still pretty drafty if you ask me, even though it's at version three. Um, and actually, uh, even if it's if it goes beyond this uh, research group or this still proposed research group, um, I, I think if you look at ICN, if you look at us in network coding, if you look at even uh, the network management people, there are um, a lot of documents uh, or drafts or whatever that cover more than one research group, and it's fine. Mm. Uh, and okay. I think, I think, uh, for example, if I see what's happening in ICN for the moment, uh, you know, all the compute first networking, all the dist and even what's happening in distributed, which looks at the encryption, there's a lot of things that we are overlapping with them and it's fine. And I think there's a lot of people who participate in all the groups and I see this as positive, not as something that's bad. So if you're, you know, I think what you're talking about, yes, has, impact for us, but it's also most likely related to what's in, in, I can say the security aspect is related to what is happening in distributed. Um, and uh, it, it could be also related to some stuff that's happening in the IETF. And, and frankly, it's fine. I, I think it's great. Okay. Um, and it oh. certainly is something that emerged from, uh, as I said, the. Uh, a presentation initially in the ICN working group because, of course, if you've got distributed data and you're trying to discover it um, you know, or place it somewhere after compute on it, um, all of the naming issues and the metadata issues are closely aligned with ICN concerns. Um, ICN could be one way to solve the data discovery problem, discovery and placement, because it's on the one hand, Discovery of data is interesting because it is to, to feed the computations, our data may be scattered and we may need to marshal it. Um, but there's the similar problem that after the computation, where do you place the data? Yeah. Um, and, and, and over time, even the problem, um, something that we've looked at uh, at Intel quite a bit is um, the almost autonomous migration of data, the need for that as we begin to not just begin to continue to um, populate the network with devices that are continuously streaming, whether it's, you know, high resolution um, volumetric data or whether it's uh, low level um, event data, it's continuous and at, over time devices have a resource limit and you need to decide what to do with that data to expire it, to Come transform it into some other format or migrate it elsewhere. And so, again, the you know compute plays a role in all of those decisions about the um, overall um, longevity and and um, whereabouts of the data. Yeah, and, and yeah, and and again, um, if when I was talking about the hackathon and the data filtering, for example, and some of the architectures I've seen, if you think about how do you define uh, which packets are interesting or not, and essentially the ICN interest and data are, are very much uh, one way of doing that. So again, I, I think all these things overlap one another and, and it's great. Uh, we haven't heard from many other people uh, who are still on who are on the call. Um, Xavier Defoy, uh which group are you which group are you part of, which you're interested in our, in our work? Aha, I put people on. 
In French, we call it sur la sellette. Um, okay, so maybe Xavier is just listening. Yes, hello. Oh, oui, Here bonjour. Comes. Here uh, yeah, so Hi. Xavier, uh, we have never seen your name on any list. Oh, I have. Have. I have. He's yeah. very involved. <laughs> okay, well, uh, so what what is your interest in our work, and what do you think you can uh, collaborate with or um, bring to the table? So, uh, basically, uh, uh, we are involved in some. Uh, I'm working uh, with uh, some other people that you may know better, like uh, Doug Trosen. I mean, we are not working directly together, but we are in the same organization. Okay, so interdigital. Interdigital, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, okay. um, basically, I'm interested in um, how edge computing would be uh, used uh, in uh, 5G networks, for example. So. Uh, you know, related to uh, the 3GPP uh, activity and uh, HC Mac, for example. Okay. Basically, uh, kind of the, the yeah. Merci. And and in case you didn't know, um, Xavier is one of the folks who was driving the draft that appeared in the Thing to Thing Working Group on IoT and Edge. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I know Dirk obviously better because I've worked with him before, but um, so, uh, yeah, it's great to have have you. Merci. Merci. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're we, welcome. We, Thank you. I'm looking to have a um, some kind of a, um, a large group of francophones here so we can switch the meeting. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think oh, it will ever happen. Oh, goodness. Um, I don't think it will ever happen. <laughs> anyway, um, so, um, okay, so Any anybody else? I think we... We did, uh, I think it We have not heard from Dong today, have yeah, we? We haven't heard from Dong, so we still have to hear from we'll Dong. We'll put you on the spot. <laughs> uh, and I think we, yeah, yeah, we're, we're putting people on the spot. But yeah, that's, you know, that's the, the goal of, of these interims. It's to hear what people have to say and what they can contribute. And think. So Dong, uh, do you have any comments on what happened or something else? Ah, you're very me? quiet still. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, I, I'm actually working with Jeffrey. We are we are the same uh, working. Uh, we are the same group in in Huawei. Okay. So I'm new to this project uh, research group. So probably mm -hmm. later uh, when I uh, got the fully understanding of the entire project, uh, hopefully I can contribute to this research. Group. Well, welcome. Um, and yeah, you know, every contribution is great. And I think also um, that's another of my, you know, baby projects is I think these these research groups are also very good to um, as, as some kind of an education tool, like who people who don't know about the technology could also learn about it. Um, I think that's part of the evangelism of, of the group, but I think this is also a role of research. So thank you and, and welcome. Uh, anybody else who hasn't talked and has something to say or would like to add something? Um, yes, no, maybe. Um, I, not, I would like to hear who is um, who is uh, the core week working group. Is that yes? Um, that's what I was thinking. The, the other people we haven't heard about is who, who is are the, you? Yeah, hi. This is Carsten. This is an artifact of the oh. ICF WebEx. When you are logged in as, uh, as somebody at the WebEx, you no longer can join meetings as a human. You only can. Join them as whoever you are looking. Uh, I know I'm I'm Coin or G today, and also yeah. I don't have a name. Uh, yeah, so hello, well, well, that's fine. That to know it's you, so we know that somebody we know. Yeah, so those who don't know me, I'm I'm mostly lurking, um, because uh, in the end, in in constrained uh, networks, in particular in constrained node networks. Uh, we are really looking for friends in the network, for places to offload things to, not just processing, but also in particular storage and yep. uh, custody. Uh, so th there are a lot of, of IoT-related uh, issues here, and uh, we may want to pick them up both in the core working group and in the 
uh, Think You Think Research Group. Cool. And for those of you who may not have been following CoinRG uh, since the, its inception, it really did start in Thing to Thing, and it's sort of been uh, broke off. So we, so the lineage is we're very closely aligned with Thing to Thing. Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a it's an offspring of Think to Thing, ICN. <laughs> And a few other things, but yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and thank you for for being here. Okay, well, I don't have anything else. Um, so, but I'm not. We're only we're three people here. So, any of you other two of the gem uh, have something to say? Not no. The not gem from being Jeffrey side. Eve. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, we've started calling ourselves Gem. <laughs> Jeffrey Eve and <laughs> Marisha say. So I, I think I've spoken plenty. Thank you. So okay. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, so I've put back the next meeting. Um, so I think we, we're going to have a, a short meeting, but that's fine. Um, I think we raised good things today, so I'm really happy we had this. Uh, maybe we should have had it before, but it's fine. Uh, so let's meet. So in, in our action item, Eve, so you, since you were um, – Taking notes. Uh, taking notes. I think the action item is starting a thread about how we can help academia uh, in terms of participating, uh, either shepherding documents, allowing more discussion. Uh, we can have more maybe smaller group discussions when necessary, whatever. So let's start the thread, thread on the mailing list. I will also uh, look at uh, creating in the GitHub, uh, moving a lot of the references there, but also in the um, um, documents in the data tracker to load a number of papers from people who are the participants right now and to reach out to um, other researchers that I know uh, if they have anything they could contribute. So that's my action item. Uh, I think for I think also another, another um facet of that is, I don't know, it's not maybe not the data tracker, but it's probably the GitHub having a corner of that, which really tracks um, not just posting things on the email list about events that are happening that are in this area, but um, also listing the conferences across different organizations that fall within um, striking distance of this topic. Yeah, and that's why I said this is what I, I think we should create that <clears throat> Uh, that what I wanted to start doing it for for uh, for Singapore, but we can start anytime. So I think that's also part of everybody's um, um, uh, action item. I think everybody's action item is where if you have a draft, uh, please make sure that it's updated on time. Uh, please send us uh, um, agenda items for Singapore. Uh, if you want to participate remotely, it's fine. I actually think we should use more, you know, we should reduce our carbon footprint and use even more of the remote participation tools. So if you want to participate remotely, it's fine. Just also tell us you are and uh, ideas for presentations uh, and, uh, and agenda items. Again, as far as I'm concerned, I'd like it earlier than later since I'm teaching the wing the week before. And um, yeah, so we'll, we all see ourselves in about, I would say, yeah, six weeks or seven weeks. And uh, uh, thank you extremely much for being here this morning, this afternoon, tonight. Uh, uh, people from the West Coast, you can go back to sleep, I guess. Um, and um, <laughs> uh, or actually, you have a very strong coffee to stay awake the rest of the day. Uh, oh, and, yeah. We'll see you, you all hopefully or to hear from you uh, in Singapore. Thank you so very much. And Colin, uh, since we have stuff to talk, you can stay on the call. Uh, sure. We should uh, get, drop onto the Zoom call or, or call me. Um, I, I have a Zoom that I can just send you the, the link, so I'll do that. Okay. Just stay on the call. Hey, Daniel Bernier, um, may I request that uh, you send me an email about your plans to be on the West Coast? That would be terrific. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.